Environment variables can be an absolute pain to work with if you don't have these two key things set up. The first is IntelliSense, so you don't have to manually type out the name of each variable. And the second is validation, so you don't have to manually validate each environment variable. So let's see how we can use Zod and inferred types in TypeScript to give you both of those in just a couple of minutes. Now we're gonna start by building all this from scratch. And then at the end, I'll show you a tool that can take care of a lot of this stuff for us and add some additional features as to what I'm gonna show you here. All right, let's start by taking a look at the existing problem. Now I am inside of a brand new Next.js project. And basically the only thing I've done is create this emails.ts file, a TypeScript file inside of my utils directory. And let's say I wanted to call this from somewhere in my application, we would call the function send email, and then we need to pass in the actual email address that we want to send the email to and some sort of message. So I would probably want to store this inside of environment variable so that I can reference it like this process.env.email, and then I could send the message of hello world. Now, in this case, it's telling me this environment variable, it can't confirm whether this thing is a string or undefined because all environment variables by default are either string or undefined. There's no actual validation to happen to make sure that thing is there or that it fits a specific type of string or different data structure. And this is true even if I go into my .env file where I can clearly see that I have this email property, but my actual code has no idea that that property is there. So the first thing we can do is add validation using Zod. Now Zod is a package that's becoming more and more popular and we're using this in a couple of different ways on the Deals for Devs project and I'll show you how we use this in a second. But they have lots of different functions in here that you can go and scroll through the documentation. But the short of it is you can get down to the point where you define some sort of schema and then you can have Zod parse some sort of data and then validate whether the data that you parsed is actually meeting the schema requirements that you defined with Zod. So let's first take a look at how to define the schema for our variables using Zod. So I'm going to go into an env.ts. So this is basically a TypeScript file definition for our types. And the first thing we're going to do is import z from zod and this is the main package now i've already run the npm install for this so if you haven't already and you want to follow along you have to run npm install of zod and that'll give you the package to import there now from there we can use the z dot object to then define an object model for our type now in this case we're going to have a property called email and then that thing is going to be a string and we can add a little bit more to this in a second and then what we want to do is assign that to be a variable for our schema. So this could be our environment schema. So when we eventually, in a second, do a parse of some sort of data, it should match the schema. Now, not only could we define this as a string, we could also define this as an email as well by chaining this on. And then we could chain on another for optional in case that email wasn't required. But in this case, we want it to be required. So we're going to leave off optional. So we have our environment schema defined. Now we need to actually grab the data that we can then parse to see if it fits the validation schema. So we can do this by defining an object and then destructuring the variables from process.env that we want. So from process.env, we want to destructure that email property. Then we could create a variable parse results and we can reference our environment schema and call safe parse with that data. So in here, we're going to pass in the object, which in this case is just represented by that email property. Now, if there were other properties that we were validating as well, we would include them in the schema. You'll see an example of this in a second. And we would then destructure from process.env and then add it down here to be actually parsed by the schema itself. Now, what safe parse does is it doesn't throw an error. So if you just used a parse, command, if this fails, it'll actually throw an error, which means you would be responsible for surrounding all of that code with a try catch and then handling errors that way. So it would look something like this. But if you do a safe parse, what this does is instead of throwing an error, it will return back parse results. And that includes an error on that object if applicable. So we could check if the parsed results and then check the success property. So if it's not successful, we could then throw a new error that says environment variables don't match the schema. You could obviously say whatever you want here. You could also dive deeper into the results to see what the specific error was. And we could do this by logging out or actually erroring out the parsed results.error. So that would give us the ability to confirm which of these specific properties was missing and in what capacity it didn't meet our validation. 
In this case, what we're doing is throwing a new error that's not being handled. That will actually stop our application from running, which is exactly what we want because we don't want this to run if we don't have the correct variable set in place. But there's actually one little trick here to get this to work that we don't have working yet. So we'll come back to that in a second. But in the meantime, this solves the majority of our validation issue, but it doesn't yet give us IntelliSense with our environment variables. So if we were to come back to here and we do process.env dot, notice we still don't get IntelliSense for anything other than node env, which is kind of a standard. So how do we now add the IntelliSense to process.env so we're not having to manually type these things out? Well, one thing we could do is export a const of environment variables and assign this to the parsed results.data. Now this data property should return to us an object that matches that schema. And if we actually hover on this, we can see that the data object now does have that email property, which should give us the IntelliSense that we want. So we could export this new variable and then come and reference this inside of our utilities file. And we could reference environment variables and get an auto import and then type in email. Now this gives us our IntelliSense. It also has the basics of validation in here because it assumes that email is a string based on the schema that we defined. But there's still a few things that are a little inconvenient here. One is that we're having to use a whole new environment variables variable instead of just using process.env, which is what most of us are already used to. The other thing is this doesn't actually work if we don't have anything in our environment variables. So if you see here, if I get rid of this environment variable now, and we try to run this, it's not actually gonna throw an error even if we navigate to this home page. So you see this has loaded, but no actual error was thrown in here even though we didn't have an actual email defined in our .env. So let's first address how do we handle adding those types or the IntelliSense to process.env itself. And we can do this with this little code snippet that I'll throw in here, which uses inference to be able to define the types and apply them to process.env. So the first thing is we define the env environment variable schema type, and this comes from Zod, where we infer the type of that environment schema. So basically what that does is it takes that schema that we defined all the way up here, and it converts that to a TypeScript type using inference, and then we can reference this type inside of our global namespace associated with Node.js and then associated with process env. And what this says is process env is going to extend the nvar schema type, which means it's going to have applied all the different IntelliSense that we would get from that schema type, just like we would be looking for. So now if we were to come back to our email utils file, instead of using that other variable, we can now go back to using process.env and now we get IntelliSense for that new property in email. So that works great, but we're still missing one thing because if we refresh this page, remember we don't have anything in our environment variable file and that actually should throw an error. So one of the things we could do just to make sure that that code gets run is we can just import that file. So we can import this from dot dot and then our env.ts file. And just by importing this, it's actually gonna run that validation and then try to do everything else. So it'd probably be better if we move this at the top so that it doesn't try to do anything else until those environment variables are validated. So now we can save this and now notice that it throws an error saying the environment variables don't match the schema. So this is the hard code error that we threw. And then additionally, you can see if we scroll up, we can see the log that comes from Zod, which specifically says that the validation for email was invalid. So it has an array of errors. It'll show you an error for each one of your objects or each one of your properties on your environment variables and then give you specific details as to why that thing failed. Now, one last check to make sure this is working. If we go ahead and update, this to a real email, and then we save this file, Next.js will automatically reload that .env file, and notice our error is gone because it's gone through and validated as we start up the application, all of those environment variables, and it caught any errors, if any, in this case, none, before actually trying to run the code. So now we get this great experience of having process.env just like we used to with IntelliSense and validation. Now, real quick example of how we're using this inside of our deals for devs project, which has been a lot of fun. It's actually an open source project. And if you're interested in contributing to it, the repo is on GitHub and we have a dedicated channel inside of Discord, the Learn, Build, Teach Discord for people that are interested in participating. Now, this is a project that uses Next.js and Clerk and Zeta and Sentry, a bunch of amazing technologies. 
And you can see we have a bunch of different properties in here, but the same idea applies. We define the environment variables schema with the Z dot object. Then we destructure all of those properties from process.env. And then we define the actual object that we want to test inside of here. From there, we check the success and then we export that data if you wanna use it that way. But most importantly, we use those same code snippets that use inference in TypeScript using Zod to determine the type from the environment variables that we inputted and then applying those to the process.env scope inside of our project. So what this looks like is if I go anywhere in the code and I go process.env, notice I'm getting all these environment variables populated and I can go through and type exactly what I'm looking for and get IntelliSense and validation. Now there still are a couple of different things that we need to consider with what we just built. One is that I'm manually importing that environment variable file definition inside of the layout file. That means that that validation is run every time the page is loaded from a user that comes to our website which is not optimal. What we'd rather do is actually run this at build time so that we can see those errors when we build and have that fail to build before this is actually deployed to production or something like that. And there's a couple of other things to consider as well. And I was asking for feedback on this and several people referenced the T3 ENV uh, package to take care of a lot of this stuff for us. So they talk about simpler examples like what we just did where we define our uh, Zod schema and then we add the types to the global definition in Node.js for process.env. This is exactly what we just did. Now there's a couple of drawbacks and this references that uh, this may not work so well with transforms and default values. So if you're taking advantage of transformations and default values with Zod, you may have some issues here. Now this also talks about support for multiple environments. You can go a little bit deeper into learning about this so you can read a little bit more about this as well, but they have a setup for Next.js. So you can install this package along with Zod because you're still going to go in and define your schema. And in this case, they're defining separate variables for server and client, which is kind of nice. Now, what this recommends is to then add this file or import this file into the next.config.js. Now there's also a little interesting piece here where you can uh, use this package called Jitty to basically allow you to import TypeScript into this config file that runs at build time. Never seen that before, that was pretty new to me. That's kind of cool. But it allows you to do what our goal was, which is to import this once and have it run so that our schema actually is validated, but it's not validated at runtime when the user is actually coming to visit our pages. Now, the only potential downside about this is you are actually exporting a variable that you then reference by that new variable. So you wouldn't be doing process.env. In this case, it's env dot, which I think is a fair trade-off given the benefits that come with this package. So if you're interested in something that can help take care of a bunch of this stuff for you, but still give you the strength and flexibility to define and validate your schemas, this is a great place to look at T3 env. So I hope this little tip helped you in your project. If you're interested in following along more on this project, I'm going to be sending out emails with updates on it in my weekly newsletter. And you can find that at jamesqquick.com and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Also, if you're interested in getting a monthly curated list of developer deals, you can actually check out the project and subscribe to the newsletter at dealsfordevs.com. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.